Yeah. Got some sun. Uh, very interesting always to follow the Honourable Phil Goff uh, and particularly one of his vein popping angry presentations. Um, that was, that was uh, I think, probably uh, uh, an indication that he's been following Australian politics very closely this week. And uh, uh, one of my colleagues was kind enough to, uh, or unkind enough, to think that maybe a, a new name might be uh, Phil Rudd. But uh, probably I should refer to him always by his true and proper name, uh, which is the Honourable Member for Mount Roskill. Um, speaking uh, in the committee stages on part two of this Legal Assistance Amendment Bill, uh, Mr Chairman, uh, there are just several points that I would like to make. Um, the part two uh, is the section or the part that really makes amendments to other acts, and notably amendments to the Accident Compensation Act 2001 and also the Care of Children Act 2004. Section 26 relates to the costs of court-appointed counsel, and the court may, if it thinks it's appropriate, order a party to the proceedings to refund to the Crown an amount the court specifies in respect of any fees and expenses that relate to the appointment of counsel. Now, during the uh, uh, select committee stages, we considered this point carefully. And it's appropriate that I just want to uh, mention the good work of the committee uh, because these were uh, issues that were uh, in some cases quite technical, quite complicated, and the committee addressed themselves to them with full keenness and vigour and attention to that detail. But the section uh, that I was referring to goes on to say that no order may be made under section 131A against the Crown, against a person in whose custody the child concern has been placed following an order made under the Children and Young Persons and Their Families Act of 1989. So new section 131A uh, uh, through to 131C are inserted into the bill. And section 131A allows for an order requiring refund of payments in respect of uh, lawyer acting for the child. Subclause 2 says each party must pay an equal share of that prescribed portion. Such an order may be declined uh, to be made by the court against a party if the court is satisfied that the order would cause serious hardship to the party or serious hardship to the uh, uh, dependent child of the party. Uh, the court would need to be satisfied that in its view the circumstances of the case, including the conduct of any party, and that's important, the conduct of any party, it would be inappropriate to require the amount payable in accordance with the court's view. Test, the test, sir, for serious hardship is important and one I know the courts uh, already take seriously and it's uh, uh, well considered in other legislation. Chris Farfoy, in his uh, contribution to this debate a few minutes ago, spoke about this. Serious hardship includes significant financial difficulties that arise for a variety of reasons, and those reasons can include such matters as the party's inability to meet minimum living expenses according to what's known as normal community standards. Also relevant for consideration in a determination of serious hardship will be the cost of medical treatment for an illness or injury of the party or a dependent child of the party. And I think, sir, that that is right and appropriate. Serious illness suffered by the party or by a dependent child of the party is also to be considered in the definition or the uh, measure of uh, serious hardship. And I'm pleased to see that the cost of education for a dependent child is another relevant factor the court would take into consideration in determining serious hardship. So uh, what the clause uh, goes on to do is it actually excludes some uh, areas where, uh, or some factors that are not to be included in the definition of serious hardship. And again, I think the legislation will uh, appropriately address those matters. So for instance, sir, social activities and entertainment of the party or the dependent child are not to be considered. And the party's inability to uh, merely fund or afford goods and services that are expensive or of a high quality uh, or standard according that are, that are higher to the normal community standard of goods and services, those two, sir, are also excluded from the consideration in terms of the definition of serious hardship. Um, as I said, sir, the committee has dealt very carefully with these sections. They are complicated. They are worthy of the consideration, the careful consideration of the House and the committee. And um, uh, I'm very grateful for the work that all members did on the committee.
Members, the question is of part two, stand part. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. Party votes called for. Ask the clerk for a party vote. New Zealand National. 59 votes in favour. New Zealand Labour. 33 votes opposed. Green Party. 14 opposed. New Zealand First. 7 opposed. Māori Party. 2 votes opposed. Mana. 1 vote opposed. Act New Zealand. 1 vote in favour. Honourable Peter Dunn. 1 vote in favour. Brendan Horan. One vote opposed. Members, the ayes are 61, the noes are 58. Part two will stand part. We now come to debate on the clauses, and the question is that clauses one and two stand part. Call, call Andrew Little. Uh, Mr Chairman, thank you. Uh, rise to take.